Hello, welcome to Dungeon Rose Podcast. I'm your host, Justin. Today we're reviewing Dark Season 1, which came out in 2017. It's a German sci-fi mystery show. It's cre- It was created by Baron Bo Odar and Frenche Fries, starring Louis Hoffman, Oliver Masucci, Jordis Tribel, Maja Schon, Caroline Eichhorn, Sebastian Rudolph, Antilly Hobman, Mark Washke, Stephen Kantworth, and Rethi Cole, and uh, that's enough. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I started watching this show last weekend, and boy, it did not take me long to like, finish season one. I would, I gotta say, man, which I, I first started watching this show because uh, not only Hollywood, uh, in one of his reviews, uh, Rambly was like, oh, this show's better than Stranger Things. And I had, and I, as, I, I'm not say, saying I'm a huge Stranger Things fan, but I, 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 I like the series and I wanted to check it out just to see if it was better. And it's like, oh boy. <laughs> well, for one thing I gotta say is like, well, to me, Stranger Things is yeah, it, it can be dark at times, and it, there's the horror aspect, but really, it's like a fun 80s nostalgic show. While this show is a lot darker, it, I would say this show is more, has more, um, like, it, it's, it, 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 it's more, like, it has more of a, like, David Lynch, like, uh, Twin Peaks feel than I would say, like, Stranger Things, man, to be honest. Uh, I, I think it's just that the show came out around the same, uh, like a little after uh, Stranger Things, and that's why it probably gets the, uh, you know, the, <laughs> sorry, the comparison, right? But what the show is about is basically you have this this town called Winden. It takes place during 2019. They have like a new a nuclear uh, power plant there that's been around since the 1950s. And it's a year away from being shut down. What, what's currently going on in the sh- in the beginning of the show is that a, uh, a a boy, a teenager named Eric Oberdorf, I think is his name, goes missing. Uh, goes missing, and you have like the police and everybody looking for him. But while that's going on, you you're getting introduced to a bunch of characters who don't seem like they have in the first episode have much in common with each other but as this, the series goes on you see that everything is interconnected like there's this like like I said Jim said in my uh, episode one review like you have this like uh, you have this um, uh, speech and begin the show uh, which is which is narrated by this character called H.G. Taunthouse, which is obviously, you know, uh, he's like he's like a combination of H.G. Wells and like I get I guess Stephen Hawking. <laughs> I'm not 100 sure, but basically he comes up with he, he in the book, sorry in the sh- in the mo- in the show that's <laughs> not the movie the show he he wrote a book about time travel and he's even from the same town as our characters. It went it, right? And, uh, yeah, he, he gives us, like, time as a flat circle speech, just like in True Detective, where, like, everything has a beginning and end, right? And, and like, you can, like, he, he can see the beginning and the end at the same time, which, <laughs> which comes in play a, a lot in the last episode, which is called Alpha Oom Omega. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the show. What the what the show was starts off about is basically uh, the basically you have this character named Jonas Conwald, who is a 16 year old boy who, uh, who suffered a nervous breakdown and was in like uh, a mental institute for two months. He comes back uh, back home. Uh, the reason why he was he had a mental like a mental breakdown is because his father uh, killed himself, and like his mother is 
his mother is already seeing the, the this detective character named um, fuck what was his name Ulrich Nielsen, who is a cop in this town. Uh, is a cop in this town has three kids: Mikkel, the youngest, and what's his, what were the other ones? Magnus and Martha. Who Martha has like a love triangle with Jonas and his friend uh, Bartros who is the son of the hotel manager, Regina, and his father, Alexander, who runs the nuclear power plant that Regina's family has been uh, running since the 80s, which used to be run by uh, this character named Hegel, <laughs> Hegel's family, who Hegel uh, is this old man who is the... Oh, <laughs> this is good to be actually said. Who is the... Uh, father-in-law of the Charlotte, who is a cop, the, I think she's the chief of police in this town, who's a colleague of uh, Ehr Ehrlich, and sh she's married to the son of Hugo, Peter, who is a tranny chaser, <laughs> tranny chaser, uh, who is the psychiatrist of uh, Jonas, right? So wh while this is going on, um, uh, our, our young characters in the first episode, Jonas, Bertross, Martha, Magnus, and Mikkel, uh, yeah. at the night of Magnus coming back, decide to go to Wyndon Cave, where Eric may or may not have stashed, uh, may, have, may or not have stashed uh, his stash of wheat because he was a drug dealer, right? And there's also this subplot where, like, you know, the nuclear power plant has a secret in the, the caves that they don't want people knowing about, which you would think has to do with time travel, which the show is basically a time travel show. Oh, though, at, at, spoiler alert, at, at, at the end of the series, they mention, like, a character mentions, like, all our characters are stuck in a time loop, which, uh, you know, I, I've only seen the first season, so I, I don't know, if, like, if that's the case, or he was just being making like a fucking uh, metaphor or something <laughs> metaphor makes speech right so what ends up happening they're, they're, they go, the, the young people go to the cave at night to look for the, 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 the stash of pot, turns out that Francesca, this redhead chick uh, find, finds it and she she's the daughter of Peter and Charlotte the, the cop who ends up being Magnus what, what, what ends up happening is that our characters hear a loud roar from the cave and they lose their shit and run. As they run for their lives, uh, Jonas gets separated. Jonas and Mikkel get separated. And Mikkel gets, uh, gets uh, sent through time back in 83. Sorry, not, is it, was it 83? No, 86, right? He gets transported 33 years back in time, right? Which, 33 is, uh, is, a uh, continuous, like, you know, plot, uh, theme in the show. Which, 33 is also, a uh, special number in Freemason fucking secret society. So, like, there's... Some people are, who are conspiracy theorists might watch the show and find like uh, like Freemason coatings everywhere, conspiracy shit. I, I don't know if uh, I, I, all I know about is 33. That is like a special number. That's all I know about 33. Which they they there's a there is even a conversation that um, about 33. So I don't want to spoil too much. But the show is about time travel. You have these two two. Or first off, you get introduced to like these different time traveler groups. Uh, who, one is Noah, who's a time traveling priest, and his henchman Eagle from the '80s. And you also have this other character, who's all, known as the Stranger, who's also uh, part of this uh, uh, part of the show. Which at first I thought that he was the villain. Uh, the stranger was the villain, but it, it actually turns out to be like Noah and Eagle, right? But there's a point where like one of the characters, the, the cop character, is my favorite early, even though he's kind of a piece of shit, uh, travels back in time and tr 
tries to kill like Hegel because he he thinks Hegel uh, he thinks he can save his son by killing Hegel in the in the past. Spoiler alert. And uh, that, do, that does not end up end well for him or Hegel. It's because like Hegel has this like scar uh, across his face and a ruined left ear. And then that's when you find out, oh, that's how he like ruined his ear. It was like uh, Ehrlich traveled back in time by mistake and uh, tried to kill him. <laughs> uh, yeah. So like, so, sorry for the minor spoiler, but I had to. I had to spoil that scene because um, some people not, might not like to see a scene where a character, one of the main characters, is trying to kill a child, which it, you know, <laughs> the, uh, which was, which is a pretty long, it was a pretty long drawn out like scene, not not too long, but yeah, it was like you know, like the he go put up a fight, which you know he was. He was a bully kid, uh, and, uh, it's funny, cause, like, you know, Ehrlich sees him getting bullied and gives him advice, you know, like, uh, you gotta, you gotta stand up for yourself or they're just gonna keep bullying you, right? Uh, yeah, which, you know, he's, you also find out shit about him from the 80s, where, like, you know, Ehrlich was kind of a bully himself, <laughs> so it's kind of, I thought it was kind of funny, you have this bully character who grows up to be a cop who's giving you, like, advice <laughs> to a bully victim and then tries to kill uh, which, you know, at, at first I wasn't too sympathetic to Hegel because, you know, Hegel did, like, you know, his accomplice to, like, his, the murders. And right before he, he did that, right before Hegel gets attacked by Ehrlich, he tries to kill uh, the, his, his childhood friend's dog, Gretchen, uh, be, uh, because, like, you know, he gets jealous that she's starts hanging out with the, with the new boy who turns out to be Ur, uh, Ehrlich's dad who ha is being raised by a, a, a very hot lesbian single mother who's the, who tries to seduce uh, Claudia's mother who's the, the little girl and it turns out Gretchen doesn't die Gretchen accidentally travels through time uh, into the, the 80s and is reunited with Gretchen uh, uh, sorry, not Gretchen, uh, Gretchen's the dog, with, uh, Claudia, right, which, uh, that was a very sweet scene, and she keeps, she keeps, uh, Claudia in, sorry, she, Claudia keeps, like, Gretchen in her office, like, she has a little, like, bed for, for her on, on her desk, which I thought was, was very cute. <laughs> uh, yeah, the show, the, the show has, is dark at times, but it has its, like, uh, sweet moments, um. There's even a, yeah. Though I thought it was weird. It's 2019, and they're like, uh, there's like a scene where like uh, Jonas and uh, Bartross are playing video games, and they're playing The Surge One, which I'm pretty sure the sure The Surge One came out what 2013. So like this rich kid is playing like uh, older game with his friend. I thought that was a little weird. But, yeah. The, like the, they could have been playing The Surge too, right? <laughs> Because the, the Surge 2 came out in 2017, right? Can't remember. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Basically, the show... The show is... Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention the show is m by the way. The show is, like, a dark family drama mi mystery show where you have these characters trying to figure out where where the missing kids are, are while discovering, hey, they're... Uh, time travel might be a thing. <laughs> it takes a while for our characters to come up with the figure to figure that out, right? Yeah. So if I were to give this se season one a rating, I gotta say it's a eight out of ten. There's even some cool music in the show, uh, though I thought it was kind of weird it, that some of the songs were in English. Like the theme song for the show is in English, uh, but it, it's okay. There, there's also this really cool '80s German pop song. I, I'm gonna try to find out the game about. Yeah, so that's it for this review. I just basically I just wanna want to do this review before I start watching season two. <laughs> so alright guys, that's it for this review piece. Also, uh I might po post uh you know, I might do a review for uh, this uh, movie called uh, 
Magic starring Anthony Hopkins from, I think it was 1978, which apparently the the movie inspired, uh, it's, it's, this, it's basically Anthony Hopkins and with his puppet who becomes a, a serial killer. And it, the movie apparently inspired um, Slappy the puppet from uh, Goosebumps and inspired what, a really cool horror movie uh, from, I think it was from, I can't remember what year, I think it was 2018, called Possum, which I reviewed, and it was a pretty awesome movie. It was, uh, directed and written by, uh, Michael Hold, is it Michael Holness? Or, Ma no, Matthew Holness, who, it created the show Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, which is, like, this horror comedy, <laughs> but, like, he, he put out, like, a fucking, ser a very serious, very dark horror film, uh, starring Sean, Sheen, uh, is it Sheen or Sean Harris? Which is fucking awesome, by the way, if you haven't seen it. But yeah, I, I'm gonna post a review for Magic at uh, sometime this week. Alright, guys, peace.